Question eight is when we start looking specifically at cubic functions. So this, I know you guys struggle. Please, please, please just pay attention and work through it with me. So it says a cubic function, h of x is equal to negative 2x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, cuts the x-axis at these various points. Show that h of x is equal to negative 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 9. Okay, so remember guys, if you have all of the x-intercepts, that means that those are all of the roots. So if I say that f of x is equal to 0, that's what all of these zeros mean, I'm going to get, so that if I factorize this cubic function, I'm going to get three factor brackets with x, 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 and that's where those values come from. So we know that h of x is equal to from the first one remember that if I have x minus 3 equals 0 then x is going to equal 3 and that is why the sign changes so over here in this first factor bracket x equals negative 3 so in the factor bracket it's going to be positive okay same as the next one we're going to have here, if I have x equals negative 3 over 2, the factor bracket is going to have x plus 3 over 2 is equal to 0, which you can also write as, um, let me just double check, 2x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so this next factor bracket, 2x plus 3. And then the last one, which is this one over here, we're going to have x minus 1. Okay, so now we multiply all of this out. So we're going to have h of x is equal to, if I multiply out the first two brackets, 2x squared, 6x plus 3x is 9x, and the last two, whoopsie, the last two is plus 9. And we still have that last factor bracket over there. So now we multiply out again. We get 2x squared, or cubed, 2x cubed, minus 2x squared, plus 9x squared, minus 9x, plus 9x, minus 9. Make sure you multiply every factor by every other factor. Okay. So we get 2x cubed, minus 2x squared, plus 9x squared is plus 7x squared. Minus 9x plus 9x is 0, and we get minus 9. But remember, guys, we're proving up here that it's a negative, okay? And it said right at the beginning that that a coefficient has a negative attached to it. So we need to multiply the whole function by a negative to make sure that that leading coefficient is negative. So it's negative 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus nine and that is h of x okay so that is what we had to prove 8.2 says calculate the x co coordinates of the turning points of h okay so guys remember this is a cubic function it's going to look like this or the other way around like that and the turning point okay is going to be a turning point over here and one over there so if i draw a tangent to the graph at either of those turning points. Do you agree with me that the gradient of that tangent is going to be zero? Because it's a flat horizontal line. There's no change in y. And what gives us an indication of the gradient? Remember, it is h prime of x gives us an indication of the gradient. Okay, so if we make h prime of x equal to zero, we will find the x coordinates. So h prime of x is negative 6x squared minus 14x. Okay, remember, take the first derivative of this equation over there. So if I make that equal to 0, I find where I have my turning points. So we're going to get, I'm going to divide by negative 2 just because this looks icky. So divide by negative 2, we're going to get 3x squared plus 7x equals 0. Okay, so now if I take out a common factor 
of x, I'm going to get 3x plus 7 as the factor bracket, which means that x is either equal to 0 from this equation over here, or x is equal to negative 7 over 3 from inside the brackets. And luckily for us, they said only the x coordinates are necessary. So we've answered that question fully. That's the turning points. Okay. So now it says determine the values of x for which h will be decreasing. Okay, guys. So with your cubic functions, you have h of x, which is the original cubic. Then if you derive h prime of x is going to be a parabola. And it's going to give us an inclination of the gradient. So where it's increasing or decreasing. Okay. And then if I derive again h double prime of x, it's going to be a linear function. And it's going to give us an idea of the concavity. Okay, remember, this is very, very, very important. So we are looking at where it will be decreasing. So we need to find h prime of x. Now remember, when h prime of x is less than 0, when the gradient is negative, it's going to be decreasing. Because remember, negative gradient, the line does that. So that's where it'll be decreasing. So remember, h prime of x, we found up here, is negative 6x squared minus 14x. Okay, and we make that less than zero because negative gradient. So again, I'm going to divide by negative two, but then I have to change my inequality. Okay, so we're going to get three x squared plus seven x. Again, take out the common factor. Okay, so now remember guys, if you look here, this is a parabola, this first derivative. So what they're looking for is where the parabola sits below the x-axis. That's what this less than zero is. So we're going to have a parabola that looks like this. And what we found over here, which these values over here, this x equals zero and x equals negative seven over three, those are the x-intercepts. So that's going to be x equals zero. And that's negative 7 over 3. Okay, so now they're asking through this greater than, I didn't even need to do these over here. With this less than 0 sign, we're looking for where the parabola sits below the x axis. So from negative 7 over 3 onwards in the negative direction, and from 0 onwards in the positive direction, do you agree that the parabola sits below the x axis? So x needs to be greater than 0 and x needs to be less than negative 7 over 3. Okay, so that's where h is going to be decreasing. That's where the original function is going to have a negative gradient. Okay, and lastly it says for which values of x will there be a tangent to the curve of h that is parallel to the line y minus 4 x equals 7. Okay, so remember guys, tangent to the curve, if you're looking for the gradient, always first derivative. Okay, remember, very, very, very important. If I have my curve doing this, and I'm looking for a tangent over there, the gradient of both the tangent and the function at that point is given by g prime of x or h prime of x or whatever your function is. Okay, so what, why did they give us parallel? Remember guys, this comes from your analytical geometry. Parallel lines have equal gradients. So if I can find a g prime over an h prime of x, remember the gradient of the function, that has the same gradient as this function over here, I can find the x value. So we need to get this into standard form. So y is equal to 7 if I add 4x to both sides. 
I get it in standard form. So we know that the gradient of this function is equal to 4. Remember the coefficient of x is the gradient. Okay, so now if I make h prime of x equal to 4, I can find where the line is parallel because it has the same gradient. So h prime of x again is negative 6x squared minus 14x. And that is equal to 4. Okay, so now if we divide everything, we don't even have to. I'm just going to say negative 6x squared minus 14x minus 4 equals 0. And now I'll divide by negative 2. So we get 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 is equal to 0. And I know that this probably yields some good factor brackets, but I'm going to use a quadratic formula just in case. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4 multiplied by a multiplied by c or square rooted over 2a. Okay, and you can stick that into your calculator. So we're going to get negative 7 plus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 all over 2 multiplied by 3 and we're going to get negative 1 third or x is equal to remember now you go back delete that plus put in a minus and you get your other answer which is negative 2 okay so what was the question for which values of x Will there be a tangent to the curve that has the same, or that is parallel to that function that we're given? So these values of x here are where the tangents are going to be parallel. So if I had my original curve, okay, and I've got this line over here that they gave us, this line y equals 7 plus 4x, or y equals 4x plus 7. So we're going to have I don't know, a line here, y equals 4x plus 7. They're saying that at x equals negative 2, if my graph carries on, let me try to draw it better, um, over there and over here. Okay, so my graph needs to be facing the other way. Okay. So they're saying if I get given this line at x equals negative a third, we're going to have a tangent to the graph that is parallel. And at x equals negative two, which will be further on along the graph, we're going to have. So that's what that's saying. It's got equal gradients and they're parallel to that function. OK, so guys, the moment you see parallel lines, you should think immediately analytical geometry equal gradients okay and just remember guys what your derivatives mean first derivative is gradient second derivative is concavity just go and draw that it would make your cubic functions so much simpler okay and that is the end of that question